All right, all right. LDBC, this is your boy Coach Sheldon Harrison. You're live, live, live on the Coach Sheldon Harrison Combat Sports Show Live. Okay, guys, this, uh, you know, popcorn, pop tart fart, this fruity fecal matter fruitcake, this mix between the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man and Brawny that you see on the screen, his name is Hugo Rapson, okay? And uh, Hugo, you know, we, we, we're going to call Hugo what he is, okay? We, we're not going to call him this gentleman. We're not going to call him this man. We're going to call him what he is, this pedophile. He's a professional pedophile. That's what he is. You know, he, um, you know, he was in the park. And, you know, isn't that funny? That's where, you know, most of the pedophiles, they seem to hang out, in the park or online. I mean, you know, take your pick. But, um, you know, he was walking in the park. He saw this 14-year-old girl. Now he strikes up a conversation with a 14-year-old girl, okay? Why he's even having a conversation with a 14-year-old girl, they have nothing in common. That There shouldn't be any conversations between him and a 14-year-old girl unless the 14-year-old girl's mom or dad is there with him having a conversation, making sure that he's not saying nothing out of line like he did with this 14-year-old girl. Now, I guess they, they hit it off in pedophile terms. They hit it off. He gave this 14-year-old girl a cell phone. Now, of course, this was an untraceable cell phone, that one, a phone that he, well, they can trace it, but, you know, of course, there was a phone that wasn't even in his name or, you know, he made up another name to get the phone, gave it to her, and it was a phone that he could use to call her, and she can call him and text him back and forth. And, of course, what pedophiles always do, okay, they, um, you know, they, they try to get these young girls to, you know, show them new photos, and that's what he was trying to do. And, uh, but the thing of it is, the weird part about it is that this 14-year-old girl was actually, she was down for everything. Because they had been going back and forth and texting each other, I guess, for a few months. And this girl never told her dad, and she had no intentions of telling her father that she was talking to this pedophile. She had no intentions of telling her father, and she wasn't going to tell her father until her father, you know, caught her in the act with this phone. And the father, you know, I guess they were at home and noticed that she had a cell phone. And, uh, you know, he was like, wait a minute, she don't have a cell phone. And, you know, he picked up the uh, cell phone and he started acting like he was his daughter. And he started texting this guy, you know. And so they agreed to meet up. And, well, you know, and the whole story, you know, the dad went up and met. But let, let me, let me, before I get into what happened, okay. See, let me tell you something. When you have a young girl. When a young girl, she's physically attracted to older men, much older than herself, there's usually a void or there's a lack of something at home with the father. Okay, there's always a lack. I, I won't say it's a violation, but I will say that there's a lack of something at home with the dad. There's a huge daddy issue. And, you know, and if you look at these two, her, you look at this guy and her father, the only difference that these two have is that, you know, her dad got long hair and this guy don't. But in stature, you know, they physically kind of look the same. You know, and I, and I always found that kind of like, you know, strange, you know, when I talk about the psychology of why people do what they do, you know. I found that strange, but most of the time there's a lack. And with this girl, I guarantee you there's a lack at home. And so the dad, you know, he was completely shocked. But, you know, yeah, you know, there are some kids, guys, that they, they're attracted to older people. They, they are. And, you know, it's because of something that's going on at home with those dads or those moms or whatever. But it's usually a lack, and I guarantee you. If I could actually sit there and have them just sit in front of me and talk to them, I guarantee you there will be a, there, there's, there's a lack of something between the dad and the daughter. I guarantee you it's probably going to be there. But, so this girl was down with it. She didn't tell her dad. She didn't tell him nothing, you know. She was going along with this. And she was going to, you know, go along with it. And I guarantee you if this guy had been like, hey, let's meet up, she'd have been cool with it. But with that being said, a 14-year-old, they not smart enough to have a complete thought. Do you think they smart enough to make a good decision? Most of the times when you when your 14 year old kid, they're faced with, you know, right or wrong. They usually make the bad decision. That's why God gave gave them parents to correct them. God gave them parents so they can be corrected. 14 year olds are 14 year olds because they don't know how to be adults. This ain't the 1900s. Same 1900s, okay? It's not, you know, that, you know, you're 30 and 40 years old and you're marrying a 12 year old. No, this is now, okay? Kids should not be linking up with adults. That's just how that is. And I'm going to tell you, man, I couldn't have been this dad trying to meet this dude because you know why? <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. Oh, I'd have met him, I. Oh, I'd have met him. He'd have been met with some heavy, heavy opposition. And, and it, won't, it wouldn't be the police. I tell you that. It would not be the police. And I tell y'all, it was a situation, man. And I, I, I'll never forget this. It was, a, it was years ago, maybe about 12, 13 years ago, man. And 
you know, me and my daughter went to the mall. You know, we was at the mall, and uh, you know, she wanted these shoes. Now I'm cheap. I ain't, I ain't spending, you know, I ain't spending no, I ain't spending more than sixty dollars for a pair of shoes. Not for no child. You know, I just that's just how I am. You know, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mind. I keep every single penny. I count everything. So she went to go, go get these shoes that I told her she can finally have. And uh, you know, we, she, we, she was coming out of the store. We were meeting because I went into, uh, I was going into a gun store. You know, looking at the guns. And you know, came back out. We met. We had a little certain time that we met. Uh, back up and I'm like you you better be here at this time and if I got to come find you you in trouble and so when she was coming out of the store it was these two these two guys and they looked older and they were saying yo and at first I didn't think they was talking to my daughter but they kept saying yo shorty and so my daughter kept walking and she turned around and they were like yeah shorty what's up and I immediately I jumped over the rail and, then, you know, it was a one level mall, but there was a rail. It was a rail separating the two stores. And then I little thing. And I jumped over the rail and I said, uh, ain't nothing going on with Shorty. And then dude looked at me. He said, hey, uh, N word. Who the H is you? I said, this her daddy. And he had this look. I ain't give him time. I ain't give him time to respond. I reached out and I put my hand around this guy's throat. We had to be separated. But see, you're not coming in. OK, and you can see. You can clearly see that the girl is a is a girl. You can clearly see, okay? Oh man, I had to be. I, it took about six people to get me off this dude. And I'm telling you, had they not been there, I'd be in jail. But you know, the police came over and I said, "Yo, he was hitting on. Hey, he, he hitting on my 13 year old. Y'all better do something now before I do it." But see, he go to thing, man. He go to thing. As a dad, I'm sorry. You can't tell me, well, you know, you got to play it cool and do it. I'm, I'm not playing it cool when it comes to my daughter and some pervert like this dude, some pedophile, and that's what he is. This guy, you know, he had plans. He was going to get with that girl. He could have impregnated that girl and ruined that girl a whole life. But you see this all the time. But a lot of this stuff, y'all, it's a lot of situations like this that it go unnoticed and it's not even talked about. Y'all know that? Do y'all know that there's so many situations like this where you got these, these, these old men that's running around here, you know, thinking they still in their teens and they still thinking they got it and they still trying to see if they... No. D jail is too easy for these guys. No, no, no. Got to lay hands on them. Got to deal with them. And see, this is what I be talking about. You know, you know, I have so many guys and I'm going to tell you, you know, some of you dudes. I mean, Coach, I ever see you, man. You know, I'm going to deal with you because of your opinion on the fight. See, but guys like this still walking around. George Zimmerman still walking around. You probably, most of y'all think y'all tough. You probably know dudes in your neighborhood straight up. They probably, you know, act like this guy, and he's still walking around. Y'all got convicted se sex offenders in your neighborhoods. But then some of y'all want to get ill on the internet. Okay, here's something right here that you can just, here's something right here that you can actually agree with me on. This is something besides you saying you coming to get me, you're going to do harm to me and my family. Here's something you can agree with right here. Here it is. This guy right here is a pedophile, okay, who solicited to a 14-year-old girl. Okay, everybody named Mama that live near this guy, they need to be running this dude out the neighborhood. This guy shouldn't be allowed in his house. Look, look his house needs to be burnt to the ground. This guy shouldn't even be allowed in his neighborhood. Okay? No. See, that's not what you do. See, these guys are all out here. And I guarantee you, people even watching some of these videos. Oh, it's a couple of guys that's been suspect. It's been some that suspect they'll leave a comment. And I'm like, you know, that's that's a that's a weird comment. That's why I tell y'all, if you have kids and you make videos, don't put your kids in the video. Don't put your kids in the video. Don't, don't, don't make a picture. Don't do none of that because these guys, they looking. You know if these guys asking you what you look like, what you think they're going to do if your kids? What you think they're going to do if you, if you got your kids in the video? What you think they're doing? They, they looking at your kids too. That's just how that is. That's just the way that is. Got to be careful. I'm talking about you got thirsty dudes who, you know, you put somebody in there and if you drop a name, they'll go look up the name to try to figure out who it is. Folks, I kid y'all not. And I stopped putting kids, I, I really, you know, and I deal with kids, but I, I never put them in a video. Not like that. I got some instructional videos, but, I, I, and, you know, even with that, I, I stopped putting kids in videos. And y'all should too. That's just how it is. Y'all should too. Because these guys everywhere, guys like this, 
they everywhere. There's millions of these guys right here. But you know what's going to happen? You're going to have people that's going to come. They're going to oh, oh they're going to support this. Or you know, you know somebody will come in here and try to have an argument with me. They'll try to have an argument with me about this. Like as if that this is even something that you can argue with me about. But that guys, they will. They will it's all it's the same. They'll come in here, they'll, they'll, they'll leave a, a, a comment, and I'm going to let the comments for this one flow. I ain't blocking no comments. I don't care what the comments say. I'm leaving the comments point blank simple because it's going to prove a point. And see, by this time, people, they're not going to even listen, listen to the whole video anyway. So they ain't going to hear this part. I can tell you that now. They ain't going to even hear this part. They ain't going to even listen to the entire video. So, you know, it's going to prove my point even further. And then you as a dad, you know, I'm sitting here thinking you as a dad. No, man, I'm sorry. How can you not be enraged? How can you not be enraged to go in there and lay hands? I'm sorry. We would have been at church. I would have been a pastor and he would have been in the congregation. Hey, come on up here to the stage. Come on, because we finna drive that devil out of you. But I wouldn't be laying hands on his forehead saying, Jesus, I'd be putting my fist on his forehead, knocking him unconscious. That's just how it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You live near this pedophile, run them out your neighborhood. I'm done.